Purper is one of the most efficient Minecraft server softwares ever created. It is more efficient than paper and it provides tons of customizability, allowing you to truly set and change different things about your server's settings in order to get the most performance possible. In this video, we're going to show you exactly how to get Purper, from how to download it, how to install it, everything you need to know. Now, I do want to mention that this is not a 24-hour server. The server we create in this video for free is only going to be up when your computer is up and running. It is not up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's only up when your computer's up and running. You're also going to need a decent computer to run it. While Purper is more efficient, Minecraft servers are just in general aren't super efficient when they run, so you are going to need a decent computer as well as a really good internet connection. On top of all this, it's only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust because this server is using your own internet connection. That means anyone who you give the IP address this server to can DDoS you, meaning hit your internet offline, or figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. But what if you don't want that? What if you just want an easy way to start a server where you just click a few buttons and your server's up and running? Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in. You can go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple, and when you do, it will take you here. Now, once you're here, go ahead and click Get Started, and then select the plan you want. Purple servers can actually run on two gigs as long as you're going to only put one or two plugins on there and keep under five people on the server, but in most cases, four gigabytes is recommended, so go ahead and click get started there. Then, this is all you've got to do to add Purpur to your server. Automatically, the fastest data center near you will be selected, and click this vanilla drop-down box. In here, you want to go ahead and select Purpur Latest. That's going to mean Purpur is installed on your server whenever you get it set up. So let's go ahead, click continue, confirm that everything is correct on the next page here, that we're in Dallas and that we want Purpur, and then go ahead and go through the checkout process. Once you have purchased your server, you will get an account created email. In this email, you have a set up your account button, click that and it will go through the process of adding and creating a password for your panel account. Once your account's created, it will take you here, which is the control panel for simple game hosting. What you wanna do is click on manage server, and then your server IP is up here in the top right. You can go ahead and click to copy that into Minecraft. Your Purpur server is set up, by the way. How can you check this? Well, just come into the console area right here and type in version. When you do, you will see that Purpur is there. If for whatever reason you accidentally selected vanilla or another version, and the version isn't Purpur or it just doesn't even work that command, you can go up here to the top to versions, and then you can install Purpur from here by selecting Purpur and then clicking install. But nevertheless, if you wanted to add plugins to this server, just go to File Manager. You will have a plugins folder. You can add your plugins by just dragging and dropping them into here or clicking this upload button and selecting them and then restarting your server. At this point, though, your Purpur server is set up, and that's how easy it is to make a Purpur server with Simple Game Hosting. Again, you can check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown to XYZ slash simple to start your very own Purpur server. Nevertheless, how do you make a Purpur server on your own computer without having to purchase a server from someone like Simple Game Hosting? Well, that is where this comes in. This is the second link in the description down below, and it will take you here. This is the official Purpur download page. On this page, you want to make sure that you select 1.20.1 up here at the top, and then you want to select the version download next to the most recent version. The higher this number is, the better, because that means the more fixes that Purpur has. Go ahead and click on that, and then in the bottom left, Purpur will go ahead and start downloading in Chrome. You may need to keep or save this file, depending on your browser. Once you've got Purpur downloaded, let's go ahead and minimize our browser. Then, from our desktop, we can go ahead and create a new folder. So right-click, create a new folder. I'm going to title this Purpur 1.20.1 server. You can title it whatever you want. You could even title it Simple Game Hosting, because that's the easiest way to start a Purpur server. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and move the Purpur file we downloaded into this folder. Now, for me, that's going to be in your Downloads folder. There's a few ways you get this. You can just open up the Start menu and type in Downloads. For some reason, for me, uh, my Downloads folder is not showing up here. So I have to go to File Explorer and then select Downloads on the left-hand side. And there it is, Purpur 1.20.1. Drag and drop this into the folder that's on your desktop there that you created, the Purpur server folder, whatever you called it. It should be in there right like so. Now, what we want to do is go ahead and make sure that we can open this once we create what's called a run.bat file. To do this, what we want to do is right-click on this file, click Rename, and name it simply Purpur. Now, for some of you, it may be Purpur.jar, and that literally just depends on if you have file name extensions shown. So it's either going to be Purpur.jar or Purpur, just depending on what setting you have there. Nevertheless, with this now downloaded and moved into the folder, as well as renamed, we can go ahead and right-click and create a new text document. So again, that was right-click, create a new text document, and then it's going to create the new text document. Go ahead and open this up with Notepad, and then what you want to do is go to the description and find the, basically, code that's down there. There will be two options specifically. 
So as you can see here, we have the 2G and the 4G, or 4 gigabyte and 2 gigabyte. For this server, we're going to be going with 2 gigabyte because Prepar is a bit more efficient. I'm not even going to be adding plugins to this, so this will be plenty. And then what we can do once we've got this in here, it starts with Java, it ends with pause. We can go ahead and do file, save as, and then we want to save this as a run.bat file. Now we want to make sure that save type as is set to all files and then click save. That's then going to create a new run folder that if we look on the right hand side is a windows batch file. You can delete the new text document if we want because all we need is the run file. When you double click on run, it should go ahead and start your server, or at least try to. The first time you start your server, it's gonna fail, but it will generate some stuff. However, what if this doesn't work? What if you double click run.bat and your server does not start? It doesn't uh, generate these files and you specifically don't get the eula.txt file, which uh, should be coming through here in just a second. What if you don't get this, this eula text document? Well, you might need to download and install Java 17. Luckily, in the description down below, we've got a complete guide on getting Java 17. It goes through everything you need to know, and guess what? You need Java 17 for Minecraft servers, and Perper is a Minecraft server, so we need Java 17 for it. You may also need to run the jar fix. This is going to take the jar files on your computer, that perper.jar specifically in this case, and link it back to Java, but don't run the jar fix first. Make sure you get Java, then run the jar fix. Nonetheless, we can minimize our browser now and double click on that run.bat to get the ula.txt file if you don't already have it. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and open the eula.txt and then in the eula section here where it says eula equals false, what we want to do is change eula equals true. T-R-U-E exactly like that, assuming you agree to the Minecraft eula, which we do. Nevertheless, with eula equals true set there, go ahead and click file, save, and then the eula will be saved. And now, when you double click on this run.bat file, watch what happens it's going to start the server. So double click on run.bat, and when we do, the server's going to start. Now it is worth noting at this point that you can join this server, but literally no one else can join this server except you because it's hosted on your own network and you've not allowed external people to join the server yet. Specifically, you've not allowed your friends or anyone else. By the way, if you get this pop-up, go ahead and make sure you select private and public networks. And if for whatever reason you didn't do that, we have a guide in the description on how to fix Windows Defender for Minecraft servers. If you didn't get that pop-up, not a big deal, but if your friends can't join later on after we port forward, it's probably Windows Defender. There's a guide below for it. Nevertheless, what if you want your friends to join this server? Well, in order to do that, we're gonna need to port forward, but let's go ahead and make sure we can join it first. To do that, you obviously want to open up Minecraft, so I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. I'm gonna open up Minecraft 1.20.1, and I'll meet you on the Minecraft main menu to join this server. So here we are, the server is up on the left, Minecraft's open on the right. If we click on multiplayer, click proceed, and then, oh, simple game hosting, easiest way to start a purpose server. But nevertheless, click direct connection here. You could also add this as a server. We're actually gonna do that so I can show you later that both of these IPs will work. The one that's public that your friends will use and the one that's local that you should use. So we have local host here, and that's actually the IP, just local host, all one word, exactly like that. That's gonna be your server address or IP address. Click done and boom, there it is. The server automatically resolves. And when we join it, we'll see us join right on here on the left-hand side. There we are. Now, at this point, we can join our server. Everything's looking good and working great. However, what if you want your friends to join? Well, as I mentioned, you're going to need to port forward for that. So let's go ahead. We'll leave this server. And then when we join back in, we'll be using our public IP address. And we can use that to port forward. So disconnect from the server here. Close out of Minecraft. We also want to go ahead and stop this server on the left by just typing stop. Always stop your server by typing stop right here in the console. And then hitting enter to close it down properly. As you can see, that's going to save things and that's what we're doing here we're properly saving the server that we things don't crash and stuff like that so there we go now we have this server here and we want to port forward for it to do that go ahead and open up the start menu and then in the start menu type in cmd you'll have command prompt here open this up and then in command prompt what you want to do is type ip con fig ip config exactly like that and hit enter that's going to give us a few numbers here i'm going to go ahead and open up notepad so we can make a note of these numbers and the two numbers we specifically want is the ip v4 address as well as the default gateway so let's go ahead and get both of those now my ipv4 address is 192.168.1.28 right like so except i typed it in the wrong place there and then for the default gateway mine is 192.168.1.1 now for you it might be the same it might be different or you may have two so if you have one that's numbers and letters and then under that there's another line with nothing next to it over here but it's under the default gateway and it's just numbers like this one right here that's the one you want so go ahead and get that one that's just numbers not the one that's numbers and letters. Nevertheless, with both of these noted down here, we can go ahead and open up our browser. 
and then in our browser we want to create a new tab. In this new tab right up here at the top where you would normally type in the breakdown.xyz, simplegamehosting.com, or youtube.com, type in your default gateway, which if you remember in my case was 192.168.1.1, right like so. Now, for you it's probably something completely different, but just to compare here you can see 192.168.1.1, they both match there. Now uh, it just aired out on the back end because um, I mixed some numbers here, it's 192.168.1.1. One, I flip those and then once it connects here you'll have this log in box and again we can compare here 192.168.1.1 those are the same awesome now in this login box you're gonna enter in your router's username and password it's worth noting this is different than your Wi-Fi password or anything like that we have a complete guide here on how to find your router's password walks you through each and every method including contacting your ISP but most people find it by method 3 and pretty much everybody finds it by method 4 probably what 2% of people contact their ISP SP, and uh, sadly, that's just occasionally required for port forwarding. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and enter in my router's username and password. I will see you once we've logged in. So this is what my router looks like. Yours is probably going to look completely different, and that's A-OK. -okay. But what we're looking for here is port forwarding. This could be named a thousand different things. Luckily, we do have an in-depth guide on how to port forward your router. Now, specifically, we have this up here at the top, which is a complete guide to port forwarding on any router. It goes over a ton of popular routers, Netgear, Linksys, Spectrum, Comcast, AT&T, all of those popular routers are right up here in this video. And even if your specific router's not in that video, watch the video because a lot of routers are similar. You'll pick up a lot of terms. Speaking of though, what terms should you be looking for? Well, it could be an advanced, it could be an advanced advanced, it could be an advanced administration, it could be a NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, it could be a NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could just be an apps and gaming, gaming and apps. It could be in security, it could be in firewall, or it could be in security and then firewall. Overall, just click around your router. For me, it's in advanced, and then it's in advanced again, and then it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. Once you select port forwarding slash port triggering, it's probably going to be a bit different depending on what your router is. So for mine, I have to click add custom service. For you, you may need to add a new port forward. For others, you may just need to enter in the first box, right? If you have a big list of empty boxes, just start with the first one. For me, it's add a custom service or add a new port forward. And then once you've loaded this up, you will have similar options as what I have. For service name, ID, identification, this is just what the port forward's for, and it can really be anything. I'm just going to put per per server because that's what we're making here. For the protocol, you want to make sure it's TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. Just go ahead and make sure both of these are selected here. That way, everything works properly. If you can't select both for whatever reason, and it literally could be the word both, but if for whatever reason you can't select these, you can do this twice. Do it once for TCP and once for UDP. Okay, though, I have the option for both. For external port range, internal port range, and as a matter of fact, anything that has the word port in it, you're going to enter in 25565. So external port, 25565. Outside port, 25565. Internal port, guess what? 25565. Inside port, 25565. It doesn't matter if it has that word port on it, it's going to be 25565. For the internal, local, or inside IP address, what you want to do is enter in the IPv4 address we got earlier. So in my case, 192.168.1.28. Now you might also have a list of devices with a big drop down, which I kind of have here. You could also select your computer from this list. Mine's right here, right? So I could go ahead and select that. But that's really just depending on your router. Now for 90% of people, you're done. But there is a small percentage of people that will have an outside or external IP address. Luckily, everybody who's watching this video needs that. They need their external public IP address. So in the description down below, we have this, which is what's my IP address, and it will show you what your IP address is. Now all you can see here is 43. That's because you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. Just like uh, we don't want to give this out to everybody on the internet. So you can only see 4.3 here. You can also see a few things, but region, city, latitude, longitude coordinates. That's all the stuff that you can get from a public IP address. And that's why it's so important to keep this private. Obviously, we have it closed out here, except you can see I live in the United States. But other than that, it's all kind of covered up because we don't want to give this out. And that's why it's so important to keep this private. If you do want to do that, you don't have to worry about losing your IP address at Simple Game Hosting. That is all handled by us. 
so you just can sit back and play the game. Now let's go ahead and click on click to copy here and it's going to copy your IP address. From there we can go back to our router if we need it. We can also click apply, click save, confirm, save the port forward and then once you've done that we can go ahead and minimize our browser. Now at this point we've got our public IP address. We want to go ahead and start our server. So just come in here and double click on that run.bat file. I'm also going to open up Minecraft. I will see you on the Minecraft main menu to join this server with our public IP as well as give you some other information that you should know about your server. So here we are, Minecraft is open and the server is running. We can go to multiplayer, click proceed. Now we do have this local host here, obviously. But if we go ahead and click add server again, we're gonna name this one the public IP. Now for server address, I'm gonna paste that in, but again, you can only see 43 at the end because we don't wanna give this out to anybody and everybody. Then go ahead and click done here at the bottom. And now we have this twice. We have the local host as well as the public IP. Now I know that if I double click on public IP here, it's gonna join on into the server. And once we've joined into the server, we can see it's the exact same server that we were on when we used our local IP. You can see on the left hand side, Nick's games joined, but we do have uh, part of this covered up here because the public IP shows over in the console as well. But nevertheless, that's how I can join the server. I can use my public IP. Your friends have to use your public IP to join. But in some cases, in some cases, you won't be able to use your public IP. And that's okay, because as long as your friends can use the public IP address, nobody else has to. Only your friends, you can use localhost to join your server. So you would join via localhost, your friends would join via the public IP address. Now, it is worth noting that if you have any issues with your friends joining, it's most likely going to be Windows Defender. And like I said, we do have an in-depth guide on how to allow Java through your firewall for Minecraft servers. This covers everything in depth. I also have a guide on how to add more RAM to your server and how to fix broken Minecraft servers. So should you have an issue with your server, this is where you can go to get help. Last but not least in the description, there is this, which you probably want to add plugins to this server. And guess what? This is our plugin guide. It goes over everything from setting up essentials in a Tabex store, all the way down to how to change the message of the day and seeing your CPU usage on your server. So it covers everything. It's super in-depth and it's worth 100% going and checking these out if you want to uh, get things up and running on your Minecraft server. Nevertheless, at this point, you know how to make a purple server in Minecraft 1.20.1. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more incredible content every single day of the week. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.